Hey everybody, you're looking at my OSIN virtual machine built on the Trace Labs image and it's built on a Raspberry Pi. And today I am gonna show you step by step how you can build this same VM on a Raspberry Pi and get cracking on OSINT type work right away. Coming up. Hey everybody, so continuing the theme of OSINT for the month of June, wanted to do more of a technical episode and show you how you can build out a platform to allow you to start doing OSINT work for yourself. Now, instead of kind of rolling my own and pulling a couple tools in and showing you that, it made sense to me to take advantage of Trace Labs and a VM that they make. It's a curated VM with all the best tools for OSINT that they use professionally. Now, as a quick aside, Trace Labs is a group that helps law enforcement find missing persons using open source intelligence. And it's, it's quite an impressive organization. Very, very uh, awesome stuff. Uh, be sure to hit subscribe because next week's episode is going to be a covering Trace Labs and the work they're doing and really diving into some of these search parties that they execute and how they find missing persons. So I'm very excited about that and can't wait uh, for next week's episode to show you that. Now, again, in the world of OSINT, there are so many options you can see here there's just some a few of them right they're kind of hard to see but there's there's a ton of different ones right and how do you know which ones are the best and which ones aren't especially if you're new so again trace labs has rolled this vm that you can download now it's an ova file which means you can pull it into virtualbox if you want to but because i like to run things on raspberry pi which is not i'm not going to stand virtualbox up on raspberry pi um, I don't even know if you can be honest with you. Uh, we're going to have to choose a different approach. Now, let me just break down what the pieces of this episode are going to be so you can have it in your mind, okay? The very first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to build a Kali box up in AWS because we need a Debian based operating system in order to run the scripts that are going to build the Raspberry Pi compatible version of this VM. Then we're going to need to download the, uh, the image that gets built to our local workstation and use a Raspberry Pi image loader to load the VM onto an SD card, which is going to basically be the operating system with all the great tools into our Raspberry Pi. We'll spend a minute talking about the hardware if you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi hardware, and then we'll boot it up. We'll get um, remote access into the um, Raspberry Pi so it can be headless, and then we'll actually look at you know, not only how to connect, but like a little bit about the VM. So that's kind of the overview of how today's episode is going to go. So again, the very first thing we have to do is take a look at this Tra Trace Labs VM Raspberry Pi build. Now, again, that OVA has all these tools, but because of the chip architecture, you kind of have to build it differently on the Raspberry Pi. I will link to this GitHub in the show description below so you can follow along step by step. Now, the first thing I need is a Debian box. I have a Kali Linux box, which is Debian, up in AWS, and that's what I'm going to be using. It does not have to be Kali. It can be anything Debian, but I, you know, because I have a Kali box, if you don't know how to build a box in AWS, I've got a link right there in the card on quick, easy install for Kali Linux and AWS. You can go ahead and follow that video if you want. So let's just jump in really quick. So here is my Kali box, right, up in AWS. So what you want to do is click this green cloud button here, click the copy to copy it so you can bring it in here. You're going to do get clone and then the URL, hit return. And, you know, I've already built it, but it will pull down, right? So then you can do CD trace labs and then you should have this directory, right? Once you're in this directory, following the directions in the, the um, GitHub here, you can see you got to do sudo uh, dot slash build depths dot sh, right? So sudo dot slash build depths dot sh. Now I've already done this. Um, I'll do it again, whatever. So simply run it down. It's going to pull down some dependence files that it needs, dependent dependency files, right? Then the next thing you're going to do is this sudo rpi build and then the image name of your choice, right? So I called mine simply cyber TL OSINT June 21, but you can call it, you know, your OSINT VM. Okay, now 
once you hit return, it'll start building it. I want to tell you this takes like hours, right? It took, or it took me in this configuration about two and a half hours for it to pull down all the stuff. It'll ask you a couple questions during it. So you can't leave it completely alone for a few hours, but just be aware that it will take time to build this thing. So once you're done, um, you can see, let me see. You could see here's my image, okay, right? So it built it, it's huge, it's like eight gigs big. It's awesome, right? Now, now here's a trick I learned to move files. Like you could use SCP and pull it down, but I always get confused about it. So what I always like to do is python.m, or excuse me, python slash dash m, simple HTTP server, right? This is basically just standing up a simple uh, web server on port 8000. Now here's the really cool thing. When you look at it, it shows you the directory listing in a web browser and you can just simply click and download, right? So this is a super easy trick for transferring files off of uh, servers uh, onto your local workstation and stuff like that. Just a little tip. It only works one way though. You can't push files, but once you okay, so once you download your image, you'll have it locally on your machine. You can see here it's 8.6 gigs as of right now. And now you've got to put this image on the Raspberry Pi. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to download the Raspberry Pi loader, which you can get uh, right here. Um, and I'll put the link in the show notes, right? Raspberrypi.org slash software. You need this Raspberry Pi imager. And uh, as a quick aside, if you don't have a Raspberry Pi yet, I have an Amazon uh, list built that shows you the things that I use uh, in my lab here. So, you know, it's probably, I don't know, what, 70 bucks here for this whole thing. Uh, so I, I'll link to this shopping list in my show description. So if you need the hardware, you can get it. Uh, and that's good. So you got to get this loader, right? And once you get the loader, it's pretty easy. You just click on the um, what operating system you want, use custom. Um, you find the image. Oh, you have to do all files, right? Because the DMG file format, at least for me, right? If you're not on a Mac, it might not have that problem. But you go ahead, choose that image, choose the storage, which would be your SD card. Uh, I don't have an SD card in plugged in right now because it's actually in my Raspberry Pi. But you would choose that and then you would just hit write. It'll take, I don't know, a few minutes, whatever. And when you're done, you've got your Raspberry Pi uh, OSINT VM burned onto your uh, SD card, right? Pop it in your Raspberry Pi and let's get ready to boot it up, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is... With the Raspberry Pi, I like to run it headless, which means like no display, no keyboard, no no mouse and stuff like that. But when you're initially setting it up, um, you you have to plug a monitor and keyboard at least into it. You could get a mouse if you if you want, and you have to basically like boot it up. OSINT is the username. OSINT is the password for this particular build. And Once you are got your uh, VM booted up, your your I mean not your VM. Once you've got your Raspberry Pi booted up and it's running this uh, OSINT, uh, it's you know it's funny because it, I've been calling it a VM, but it's not really a VM. It's actually the build on the SD card. But once you type network, get advanced network configuration. You can see this. You just hit the plus symbol, choose whatever is appropriate, Ethernet or Wi-Fi. I chose Wi-Fi. You'll have to put in your SSID, which is your network name, whatever that is. And then I assume that you have some type of security. So choose the appropriate security and, you know, put in your password, whatever. Save it off and it will connect. Um, it'll connect and then you'll be good to go. So once you have got your internet up, you'll have to uh, enable, like download and get SSH so you can actually remote into the box, right? So sudo inst app get install SSH. Uh, I've already got it, so you're good to go there. Okay, so it's actually tight VNC server, so you can do sudo app get uh, tight VNC server. There you go. And you can see I've already installed it, uh, which is fine. And then you run it by doing VNC server and hitting enter, right? So once you get that, it's going to build. I already have one instance running, so this says two, but it'll be... Um, 5901 would be instance one, 5902 would be instance two. So once you've got that configured, maybe give it a reboot just to make sure everything has settled in nicely. And then you can, um, you know, you can basically take your display off and your keyboard and stuff and basically just have the, the Raspberry Pi running headless. So then you can download a VNC viewer, right? And get here, you can create a, this is how I did it, right? You get a VNC viewer, you could do a new connection. 
you put in the IP address of the box that you got. Uh, mine is on my local network, so it's 56.109, and then 59.02, right? Because or 59.01, what, whatever instance it said when you started VNC server. And if you're not sure how to get your um, IP address, you can simply type in ifconfig, and then I like to do grep inet um, because it'll it'll kind of filter out some stuff, and you could see you should be able to find your local network, right? 192.168 or 172.16 or whatever. Um, and there you go. So now, once you reboot and stuff like that, you can use that um, basically VNC viewer to remote in as I've done right here. And now, just like the intro showed, we've got our VM. Now, le let me show you this. There's going to be a link to a YouTube video down in the show description because the Trace Labs group has actually several videos about this VM, but they have one that kind of explains uh, the tools that they use and how and why they're there and stuff like that. And they do a much better job than I could do to explain that. But I just want to point out a couple things here. You know, browsers are huge in open source intelligence. There's so many great resources and websites out there. Um, you know, both, you know, public service type stuff like tax records and voting records, but also tools uh, that people have developed that are web based, right? Um, also, we've got some kind of shell um, or terminal programs, right? Command line programs that are pretty popular. And they've just broken them out. Like Sublister is a huge one, right? Um, downloader emails, right? So you can, you can basically see how they've built it. Now, one really cool thing that I saw in the video, in case you're curious, you could click on any and it'll basically run the app with the help argument. You see how it initially played twin uh, or executed twint.h, twint's the application, h is the help argument, and it gives you a little bit of an explanation on what this is. So this tool is a Twitter scraping tool, right? So you could be like, oh, okay, you start to figure it out. But just the nice thing is these apps are curated by the Trace Labs people. So uh, really, really cool. I hope you uh, do this. I plan on, usually I just kind of build these uh, Raspberry Pi Labs and then blow them out, but I actually want to uh, spend some time playing around with Trace Labs and this particular VM because I'm really, really loving some OSINT stuff. And of course, I do want to point out if you find a tool that you like, this is a full, you know, machine that you can use. I mean, you could use this as your daily driver if you really wanted to. But more importantly, if you find tools you like, you can bring them in here and just make them part of your workflow, right? Um, so very, very cool. All right. So we built a Cali box in AWS so we could uh, run the scripts to build the Raspberry Pi image. We pulled the Raspberry Pi image down to our local instance, use the Raspberry Pi image loader to burn it onto the SD card, pop the SD card into the Raspberry Pi, fired it up, got the internet working on it, downloaded SSH and VNC, and then rebooted it and dropped into it uh, from our like actual workstation where we work most of the time uh, to get into our OSINT build and start doing that. So give it a shot. Put put your questions or comments below. I mean, are there any other tools? Have you had experience with Trace Labs or with their with their OSINT VM? I'd love to hear it from you. Again, next week we're going to be looking at Trace Labs. I've already kind of started interacting with the the organizers over there. Very, very nice people. Fantastic uh, mission that they're executing on. And I can't wait to share it with you. All right. I hope you had fun this week. And until next time, stay secure. <music>